about some of the numbers around the ANZ quarterly update. What will stand out for investors and traders when ANZ shares come online, though, in, in 50 minutes? I think no surprises from ANZ here. We've seen underlying uh, profit for the quarter up by 4.6% quarter on quarter or up by 4.1% compared to the previous corresponding period. It's so coming in at $1.48 billion. Now, we've already seen updates from NAB, from CBA and from Westpac in the last couple of weeks. So not surprising to see ANZ follow suit and say margins have been coming under pressure here in Australia. But it's offshore. Businesses seem to have been doing quite well. Revenue up by 5%. And we'll really be hearing more details from ANZ coming through from the 9.30 a.m. conference call. So in around about 20 minutes, we'll see some more details. But of course, this is a week where we did see ANZ lifting its uh, standard variable rate by six basis point, independent of an RBA move. It also announced that it would be looking at making 1,000 job cuts by the month of September. So a lot of questions for ANZ, uh, including its strategy, I guess, in Asia. But it does look like the offshore market's doing well, while the Australian market is uh, still under pressure. Julia, Santos is the other big one today. Full year profit jumping 51% uh, on oil prices and asset sales. Uh, it's talked of maintaining 2012 guidance. How is these numbers and, and the guidance um, kind of indications matched up with, with what the market was expecting to see and again how shares might react? The headline number was quite impressive, up by more than 50% to $753 million. But if we have a look at underlying NPAT, we were expecting to see a figure of $474 million, and they've actually come in under that at $453 million, so slightly below our expectations. If we have a look at Santos, in terms of production, we know that their production has been on the lower side of guidance. For the full year, they were predicting between 47 to 50 million barrels of oil equivalent, and production actually came in at 47.2 million barrels of oil equivalent. So what's been driving Santos's profit is actually the higher oil prices and the higher gas prices that we've been seeing. If we have a look at Santos as a business, so it derives its value from three key assets. That's the Cooper Basin assets, uh, which have been supporting Santos over the last few decades, and then the Gladstone LNG and the Papua New Guinea LNG projects. So if we have a look at those three projects, the growth is going to come from the LNG projects, the Gladstone and the Papua New Guinea projects, but with the Cooper Basin assets, there's a possibility of uh, deriving and extracting the shale gas assets uh, from that long life asset. So I guess the market's going to be looking for an update on the Cooper Basin assets in terms of the underlying result coming in below our expectations. Julia, just finally, Billabong, uh, obviously in the focus. Um, actually, I was interestingly reading that NAB had been a substantial shareholder, just dumped um, part of that holding. I think uh, in the week before this week, which means it would miss out on any big jump up in the share price that might come. But half year results today, what's expected? In, the half, in terms of the half year results, it's actually been quite a difficult time for Billabong. They've seen adverse uh, weather conditions both here in Australia, around Australasia, as well as in the US, and that hasn't really helped them out in terms of sales. So if we have a look at core EBITDA, we are expecting to see a result between 74 to $79 million, and we're expecting underlying net profits to come in at $28.3 million. Of course, part of this is that we have seen a weak retail environment globally, and if we have a look at uh, the US, US, which is a big component of their earnings, like for like sales actually turned negative in December. So that that was a key uh, that that will be a key for Billabong, especially in terms of the outlook statement that they will give. If we have a look at Billabong, the flip side is that the difficult retailing environment means that their share price has fallen substantially, down 78% in the last 52 weeks, and that means that, that the company is looking quite cheap. If we have a look on an FY13 basis, uh, a PE ratio of about 5.6 times. So of course takeover speculation once the share price falls this low and the takeover speculation has been uh, around um, TPG taking a stake at about three dollars. So the market's going to be watching any update of a possible takeover because a three dollar price would be extremely attractive to current shareholders because it represents a 68 percent premium to the last traded price. So the market's going to be watching for confirmation of those rumors. Also they were looking at a capital structure review so the market's going to be watching for an update update to, I guess, the dividend strategy, or whether we are going to see a cornerstone investor step through um, or a full takeover bid. So lots to watch out for in terms of Billabong, but it has been a difficult retailing environment. But the flip side of that is the fall that we've seen in terms of the share price makes it an attractive